Hey there, and thanks for stopping by. So you're wondering, how does a suppressor impact the performance of your Battle Zero out of your AR downrange? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into how a suppressed AR performs versus an unsuppressed AR using a 50, 200 yard zero. In this video, we're gonna quickly review what the Battle Zero theory is, and then we're gonna move down to the range where we're gonna fire this rifle with a suppressor installed at 50 yards and then 200 yards, and then remove the suppressor and shoot again at 50 and 200 yards. And at the end of the video, we'll come back and review the results so that you understand exactly what your suppressor is doing to the performance of your rifle. Now, if you like the sounds of that, stick around. Let me know in the comments what you think. Also, please note this video is one of four where I deep dive into how changing various components on your rifle will impact the performance of that rifle downrange. So if you'd like to know more about how things like optic height, barrel length, and different bullets will change how your rifle performs, be sure to check out the other three videos that I put out on this exact topic. Before we take a deep dive into the different variables and how they impact your battle zero, let's take a couple of quick minutes and review the battle zero theory so that we all have a baseline of what we should be seeing in the data so that we can accurately understand what the variables are doing downrange. So when I say battle zero, this representation is gonna give you a look at what I'm referring to. So the horizontal line that's straight represents your line of sight. So that's you looking through your optic, that's always gonna be a straight line from your rifle, basically to infinity. Then down below, the arc represents the trajectory of your bullet. So for a battle zero, for instance, a 36 yard, 300 yard zero, what happens is your bullet's gonna start out below your line of sight, say inch and a half, two and a half, whatever it might be, depending on your optic mount height. It starts out below line of sight, comes out of the muzzle, and it's gonna rise up to meet your line of sight. No, the bullet doesn't defy gravity. The barrel is essentially aimed up to meet line of sight. So where it meets line of sight here, that's your close zero, 36 yards, for example. So the bullet comes out of the muzzle, climbs to meet line of sight, then it goes above line of sight for some period of time, before it falls back down to meet line of sight at what we would call your far zero. So your 36 yard might also be a 300 yard zero. So that's close zero, far zero. Then the bullet's gonna fall indefinitely below your line of sight. So when you're using a battle zero, the theory is put your sights in the center of a generous vertical target. And then if you don't know the range to that target, your impact should only be plus or minus a couple of inches from your line of sight within the range that we're going to define, say, in this video. So that said, let's move into testing the different variables. I think it's gonna be really fun to see how each of these different items are gonna change the performance of our bullet downrange. So here we go. So we're gonna use my Griffin 11 and a half inch Mark II rifle with a Griffin Dual Lock 7 30 caliber suppressor. We're gonna run the Rydon 1 to 10 LPVO in the zero gravity 193 mount. Now, we're going to keep the rifle and the optic the same, as well as the ammunition. And for ammo, we're going to run the MEN M193, which seems to shoot decent out of my rifles, 55 grain ammo. And we're going to use a 50 200 yard zero. So what I want to do initially with the suppressor installed is zero at 50 yards, which I've already done right here. Then I'm going to move out to the 50 yard line and put a five round group on cardboard for you to see that zero on camera. Then move out. 200 yard line and shoot a 200 yard group suppressor installed we'll do that along the left hand side then i'm going to come back up to 50 yards remove the suppressor re-zero my rifle at 50 yards shoot a group on cardboard and then move out 200 yards and see the difference in our point of impact we'll find out after this portion how much and if any difference a suppressor makes to your battle zero performance so let's fire the rifle up here we are at the 50 yard line with our suppressed 11 and a half inch rifle. Now I'm going to put five rounds on the bottom left dot. Now that I think that was the fifth round flew a little bit out of the group, but uh, looks like four are in the orange dot. Let's move back to 200 yards and see where we land. 
200 yards with our suppressed rifle. Again, I'm on the left-hand row of dots, shooting the middle dot. In theory, we should be pretty close to zero here. All right, there's our five rounds at 200 from here. We'll pull the suppressor and reshoot it. I was originally thinking I'd remove the can and get zeroed off camera, but now I feel like it would be cool for you to come along and see the process. So as you can tell, I've removed my suppressor. I've got three rounds loaded up and I'm at the 50 yard line. So what I'm gonna do now is fire these three rounds and see what we have for zero shift after removing the dual lock seven. As you can tell, I've put on ear muffs because it'll be quite loud. Very loud. Okay, so those rounds are impacting high and left by about two inches, inch and a half. All right, so nice little group there. And what I have to do is come right, call it 0.5, and down, I'm going to call it 0.6. And then we'll fire three more, check out where we're at. All right, still on the orange dot on the white paper. Top of the orange dot. And the orange dot. All right, so that one's just off the orange dot. So what I'm gonna do here is come down probably, I'm gonna come down point two and call it good. Now I'll load up five and we'll put them on the cardboard. Now that I've re-zeroed at 50 yards without the suppressor, let's put five rounds on the bottom right dot on the cardboard, and then we'll move out and shoot 200 and see how we compare. So, bottom right dot. So, nice little group. It's actually just a little bit to the left, but I'm going to leave it given the elevation looks good. Now let's move back to 200 yards and put five rounds there. And here we are at 200 yards with the unsuppressed Griffin Mark II. Now I'm going to put five rounds, middle dot on the right-hand column. We'll see how it compares to the suppressed performance. All right, let's take a close up look at those results. So that's all the rounds for our suppressed versus unsuppressed Battle Zero comparison. Now let's take a close up look at how this Griffin Mark II with the Dual Lock 7 suppressor performed with a 50, 200 yard zero with the can installed and without. Remember the first rounds I fired were suppressed. I put five rounds at 50 yards and I got a pretty decent group right here. In total that measures about an inch and a half or three MOA with the one flyer. But overall, I would say the bulk of the group is zeroed really nice there at 50 yards. Then I moved out to 200 yards where we fired five rounds. Four of those are captured on the cardboard. One of them slid right off the cardboard and actually hit the T-post. In total, if you count this impact across here, this is a three MOA group or just over six inches, right at six inches. And in my opinion, the four rounds are very much zeroed up. So with the 193 mount, that suppressed 50, 200 yard zero holds true. Then you saw me remove the suppressor and fire three rounds on my zero target, which actually landed here a little bit high and left. 
These were my three rounds. I then made the adjustment to my scope to bring that impact over and down where I got zeroed up. And then from there, I actually brought it down, I believe, two more tenths, which I felt like was a solid zero for an unsuppressed rifle. Then I fired five rounds at 50 yards, which landed right here. Really nice little group, no flyers in this one. I would call that elevation wise, zeroed up pretty well. Windage was off just a little bit, but not a major issue. Then we moved out to 200 yards where we fired five more rounds on the 200 yard target, which landed here. Three of them just below the orange dot and then two a little bit lower. In total, that also is about a six inch group or three MOA, which is very normal for a fighting rifle with general M193 ammunition. But as you can see, and I'll show you a close up, this group, depending on how you want to measure it, landed about inch and a half to two inches low versus my other suppressed zero. So from what I'm seeing here, and there might be a little bit of shooter error, a little bit of zero error, but removing the suppressor did make a small difference in the performance of this zero. It landed just a little bit lower. Nothing major, nothing that like this rifle, you would have an issue making these impacts, but it did change the performance just a little bit there at 200 yards. So really cool to see that comparison side by side. I actually didn't think the suppressor would make any noticeable difference, but what I'm seeing here in the performance of my groups, it did drop the point of impact a little bit when we removed the suppressor after re-zeroing. So really cool data. All right, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around to check out this video. I hope you found some value in watching. You gotta let me know in the comments down below. Was there anything you saw in this video that surprised you? Or did the data you see match what you're already getting out of your rifle? Was there any takeaway that you saw here you wanna go out and try on your setup? Let me know, let's interact in the comments down below. Now that said, my channel's seen a ton of growth recently and I appreciate each and every one of you that are engaging with my videos, subscribing, and taking the time to watch. If you've made it this far, I wanna ask for your help to continue growing. Leave me that comment down below, like the video, share with your friends, but most impactful would be to subscribe. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be in line for the next video drop that I've got just like this. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's another great place for us to interact. I can give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. We can chat in the DMs. And that's where I come up with a lot of video ideas. So help me grow this channel. Hope you're there for the next video. Thanks for watching. and We'll see you next time.